Okay, here we are with another tier list. Last week I did everything horror, and today we're going to do sci-fi. So buckle up, because I think we got some S tiers, and I think we got some D tiers. So let's jump into it. All right, I don't think I'm going to go in any order here. I'm just going to kind of pick at random. So why don't we start with Alien Romulus. Yes. Um... Yeah, I thought this movie was fantastic. Um, one of my favorite movies of the summer. One of the surprises of the summer. Um, I was kind of excited for it, but I was just kind of like, eh, the Alien franchise is um, kind of run its course. You know, this looks interesting, but I don't know. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I would say, though, like the first hour of this movie is phenomenal. I think it's like a, a, a thrill ride roller coaster of a movie. But then once it kind of turns into an action movie, I don't know. It, it becomes less interesting. It's not like bad by any means but it just becomes less interesting so um but at the end of the day it's a fun movie it's intense um it's one of those movies that keeps escalating and escalating and escalating and you're just kind of like on the edge of your seat um and a wild freaking ending like my lord did not uh did not see that coming but yeah i thought alien romulus is great so we're gonna give alien romulus an a next up is rebel moon part Two. Yeah, you know, I know there's a huge uh, Zack Snyder fan base. I know a lot of people love him, and uh, a lot of people will defend this film. And hey, to each their own, but for me, this movie was a complete waste of time. Uh, I thought it was nonsense. Uh, I would call this a garbage film. The characters are uninteresting, and I don't care about any of them. The action isn't even that great. Um, the, the story is pretty derivative. It's just... This movie is like nothing. This movie's nothing to me. Um, one of the worst movies I've seen this year. Uh, yeah, this one is going straight to the dumpster. Straight to the D. All right, now we got to talk about Mars Express. Uh, I think I reviewed this in like May or June, and ever since then, I've been just shouting from the mountaintops of how phenomenal this film is. Uh, this is easily one of the best science fiction films I've seen this year. And I think out of all the films I've seen this year, I've seen this one the most. I think I've watched this three or four times. Um, granted, it's only an hour and a half. It's a brisk watch. Uh, it has interesting characters, a fascinating plot, awesome sci-fi elements. Uh, this is just a complete complete package the animation is incredible um the action is awesome like this movie is just incredible. It's excellent. Uh, if you have not seen this film and you're a sci-fi fan, this is this is a must-watch. This should be at the top of your list. Um, so Mars Express, for me personally, uh, is S tier. Oh, yeah. I hope that this movie finds a following. Um, I don't think it's ever going to be as big as, like, Ghost in the Shell or Akira, because that would be kind of impossible at this point. Um, but there are, like, anime films that are still have, like, a cult following, like like Perfect Blue or Paprika. I hope that this movie kind of finds an audience over time, because uh, I think it's it, it deserves it. It's, it's a great film. Okay, then there's Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're showing up to this movie to just watch these two monsters beat the shit out of each other, I'm sure you got a lot of enjoyment here. Um, I, for one, am the same. I just want to, I just want to see these guys go toe to toe. And, but at the same time, I also want a story to be enraptured in, enraptured by, and I want to be like, just wrapped up into this world. And yeah, it, this movie is ridiculous on that front. It is, um, I don't know. It was okay. Even when they're fighting at the end it's kind of like we've seen these we've seen so many of these movies that the awe and the the spectacle of it all just isn't as strong as it used to be um so yeah this one it was okay it kind of just came and went i saw it and then the next day i moved on with my life uh so we're gonna give godzilla kong a c all right, the recently released Transformers 1. Uh, I have not reviewed this film yet. Uh, I actually saw it just last night, so you're getting uh, hot from the presses, my thoughts of Transformers 1. Um, I thought this movie was awesome. It's easily one of the best Transformers movies ever made, although that's not really a, <laughs> that's not really a high bar. Um, but yeah, this movie was fantastic. It's a lot of fun. It's funny. has great action set pieces. The animation is incredible. Um, great story. Um, I, it went places i didn't think it was gonna go um but yeah this is just this was just such a fun breath of fresh air and it's funny because um on friday night i saw the substance <laughs> which was a wild horror movie so this was kind of a nice kind of palate cleanser um just kind of a fun light-hearted uh action film 
uh but yeah this one was great 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 please go uh please go check this one out it's a lot of fun we're gonna give transformers one an a then there is the big one dune part two my god yeah i mean what is there to say about this movie that hasn't already been said uh since march um it's big it's grand uh it's on a scale that we typically don't see in films it was one of my favorite imax experiences um beautiful world beautiful cinematography uh great acting across the board um an incredible climax um a thrilling climax it's just this movie is so so damn good it is phenomenal i'm sure it's going to be on everyone's top 10 list at the end of the year and it's well deserved uh yeah dune part two is easily we're just going to shoot it right up in the s right next to mars express dune part two is not only one of the best science fiction films of the year but just straight up one of the best films of the year okay then there's that netflix film that we all probably forgot about and that is uh spaceman starring adam sandler yeah, this is uh, a movie that just came and went. I remember watching it. I remember not thinking highly of it. And then I just forgot it. It was just like someone took it out of my memory. So I was like researching science fiction movies that came out this year. I was like, oh, yeah, Spaceman. Um, yeah, this wasn't that great. Uh, I like some of the banter between him and his, his friend. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't want to spoil anything here. But he has a friend um, in, his, uh, in the space station. But yeah, all the dramatic stuff didn't really work for me. Just overall, it was just kind of dull. Uh, yeah, I did I did not enjoy Spaceman all that much. So we're going to give Spaceman right to the D. All right, Furiosa. Uh, yeah, Mad Max Fury Road is one of the best action films of all time. So obviously I was super excited for Furiosa, and I thought it was wonderful. Uh, is it as good as Fury Road? No, but this movie's kind of doing its own thing. Uh, I think Anya Taylor-Joy kills it. I think Chris Hemsworth is having a lot of fun. I think the set pieces are just gobsmacking. Like, they're not as good as Fury Road, but they're still just like, holy, like the paragliding scene. Oh my God, so damn good. Um, yeah, this this movie is wonderful. It's a, it's a return to George Miller's mind. It's a return to George Miller's wasteland. And um, so much fun. I really, really dug the shit out of this movie. I know a lot of people didn't like it that much. Um, but for me, I... I went and saw it twice in IMAX. I thought it was just ugh, such such a good action movie. We're going right to the A with Furiosa. Okay, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of one of those, you know, rare people who actually enjoyed Afterlife. I thought Afterlife was a lot of fun. It felt like uh, it felt like they were taking like that small town, you know, adventure film, like a Spielberg film, but just stamped a, a Ghostbusters stamp on top of it. And it worked for me. Like it, you go back and watch the movie. It does feel very Spielberg. Um, and I enjoyed Afterlife. I thought it was not like the greatest thing in the world, but I enjoyed the hell out of it. I wasn't expecting much for Frozen Empire, but it was fun. Uh, the villain is kind of wasted. It's it's funny in parts. There's so many fucking characters. Uh, overall, it was just kind of like, all right. It didn't really do much for me uh, personally. But hey, that's just my opinion. We're going to give Ghostbusters a C right next to Kong. Then there's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Hey, if you've been following my channel for a while, you already know that I love this franchise. I reviewed all of the older ones from the 60s and 70s not that long ago. I think the Caesar trilogy is one of the most underrated trilogies of all time. And so, yeah, I was I was really looking forward to this one. And guess what? It didn't disappoint. I thought this movie was fantastic. Um, it's funny because, like, you know, when I watch... When I watch movies that are very effects heavy, special effects heavy and, you know, CGI heavy films, I'm kind of just like, man, this doesn't look very good. But then I go and watch something like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and I'm like, I'm convinced I'm looking at a talking fucking ape right now. Like that is so I don't know what they're doing over there when they're making these movies, but it looks better than 90 percent of what comes out. So I don't know. It's it's just it's just awe inspiring to see like how good these these apes look in these movies but anyways the story is great it's a good continuation from the caesar trilogy uh great set pieces at the end the climax is is so much fun uh great acting great performances it's it, it i love love this movie this movie was awesome we're gonna give kingdom of the planet of the apes an a okay last but not least a quiet place day one 
Uh, this was okay. It, it, you know, it felt like, you know, in Quiet Place Part 2, the movie opens with that just incredible set piece when they're in the small town and then the invasion happens. Um, it's like the filmmakers were like, hey, let's like do that opening scene from Quiet Place Part 2, but like make it the whole movie. And it just doesn't really work. It didn't really do it for me. Um, the acting is strong. Some of the story beats are pretty effective, but overall, like none of the none of the like set pieces with the aliens are really thrilling or interesting. Um, it's just kind of a chase scene throughout the whole movie. And uh, yeah, I just find it I found it all as a whole to be kind of bland. Uh, not a bad movie. I don't think it's a D, but um, I do think it's a C. It's a movie that I'll probably never watch again. I will. I will watch the first two. Um, uh, we'll watch the first two over and over again, but this one, uh, once was enough. Okay, let me check my list here. I think that's everything, you guys. Uh, yeah, so here is my tier list for science fiction this year. So a lot of A's, a couple S's. Um, granted, if there's something on this list that uh, that is not here, it's probably because I haven't seen it yet, or maybe I just didn't, you know, I didn't remember. Um, but yeah, I thought I think this is a pretty strong year for sci-fi. I don't know if there's anything else coming down the pipeline at the end of the year. Not that I can think of in terms of sci-fi, but uh, that Mickey 17 looks great. But it, that, I think that's in january so that'll be next year anyways um thank you for watching hope you like this list uh, let me know what you like about it what you don't like about it do you agree do you disagree let me know in the comments below i would love to know your thoughts and until the next time i will see you on the next one